Greetings. I'm Andrea at 35 years old, I sharing my story. I'm employed at an advertising agency in St. Augustine, Florida. Parenthood wasn't for me. I wasn't prepared. And looking back, I'm satisfied with that decision. Life took a turbulent turn after marriage. I'm among those who wish they hadn't tied the knot. Within just three years, marriage turned into a monotonous routine. I feel regretful for the challenges my parents face because of me. They live with me in St. Augustine, always supportive but unaware of my struggles. It's my mistake. I lacked the skill to understand people's motives. I saw anyone kind to me as an angel. Thinking back to the initial encounter with Kevin brings back vivid memories. It was a regular afternoon as I embarked on my fresh role at the advertising agency. The office hummed with the sound of ringing phones and colleagues immersed in their work. Little did I realize that this particular day would signify the commencement of a transformative adventure. Maneuvering through the cubicles, my attention was drawn to Kevin, a tall, bespectacled individual radiating a calm assurance. Kevin's friendly smile and authentic warmth naturally attracted others. Our journeys converged during a creative thinking session. Are you the new person? He inquired. Yes, just joined. The office is fantastic and they've got an excellent coffee maker, I answered. Kevin talked about the workplace, its occasional disorder, and the many meetings that occasionally turned into excuses for uninteresting lectures. Despite these challenges, our boss was quite laid back. Curious about our break policy, I inquired, how many breaks are we allowed here? I mentioned my back issues, expressing the necessity for short breaks. Oh, that's great. There are comfy spots all around the office where you can switch positions whenever you want. And hey, the coffee machine is right there. So which cubicle are you in? It's cool to know people, and it's even better if you get to sit next to them. Yeah, my desk is in the first row, four seats to the left. I ended up working together and discovered we make a great team. We shared ideas, had lively discussions, and his creativity really impressed me. I admired his out-of-the-box thinking. We just clicked, bouncing ideas off each other effortlessly. Our connection wasn't confined to the office. We found we had common interests, from indie music to exploring hidden gems in the city. As weeks turned into months, our professional camaraderie evolved into a genuine friendship. Hey, I've got four tickets to a concert. Want to check it out with me? No worries, it's not one of those underground ones. It's at a nearby cafe, and one of my favorite indie artists is performing. We'll have a great time, and there's a discount on the food with the tickets. The pasta there is amazing. You'd love it. I get it. You have a curfew. My parents are the same way. The concert technically starts around 8.45, but we can get there by 8.15, grab some food, chat, and still make it home before 9. I'll make sure to drop you off by 10 o'clock. All right, cool. But if it turns out to be boring, you're paying for everything. Friendship brought us closer and allowed us to get to know each other without any strings attached. All the supposed to be's and could have been were just regular folks hanging out. We didn't expect anything more until an unexpected post-work gathering. It was there that the connection between us truly sparked amid the clinking of glasses and laughter. Lost in conversation, our voices drowned out the surrounding noise. Time stood still as we delved into deeper topics, bearing our fears, dreams, and vulnerabilities. It was then that I realized Kevin saw beyond my professional facade, and I saw him for his passion, kindness, and the twinkle in his eyes when he spoke about his dreams. Months passed and our friendship deepened, evolving into something more. We navigated the delicate dance of courtship, cherishing stolen moments of shared laughter and glances. With each passing day, our connection grew until it became undeniable. We were falling in love. Everything seemed flattering and wonderful, but appearances can be deceiving. Despite the charm, I noticed a red flag. Kevin was a total mama's boy. His interactions with his mother were strange. He'd speak to her in a babyish voice, adopting a completely different demeanor. It was as if he transformed into a child, whimpering and giggling. This transition surprised me, and I began to question his authenticity. He created a different personality in front of his mother, concealing things he shared with me. I couldn't help but feel uneasy about people who put on such acts. One day, after he finished his call with his mom, I couldn't resist asking him about it. Was she angry with him? He was visibly nervous, but explained that she was just concerned, asking about his well-being and the challenges of his job. Despite his reassurances, I suggested inviting her over to meet, but he hesitated, citing her health and the fact that she lived alone in an old rental. It made me wonder about the complexity of his relationships and the challenges hidden beneath the surface. We manage it. Perhaps we could meet her. That would be great. 
When Kevin finally gathered the courage to express his feelings, my heart was filled with a mix of happiness, jitters, enthusiasm, and apprehension all woven together. I had conflicting emotions about him. It was quite a night at a nearby cafe where the aroma of freshly made coffee mixed with the anxious excitement in the atmosphere. With shaky hands and genuine openness, he declared his love. I was amazed that he was managing three separate worlds and willing to blend me into both. Choosing to reside with me and my family, he willingly embraced my last name. Having lived in his mother's Sarasota home, he made the move once he secured a job here. His previous apartment was costly, making him eager to share a home with me. Despite this, he never extended an invitation to his mother's place, claiming it was modest and not to my liking. He was striving to keep me concealed from his mother. I get it, love. But if we're going to marry and share our lives, we have to think about everything. Wouldn't it be a bit tricky for your mom, with whom you currently live? Yes, I understand that. But, you see, I don't think it would be an ideal place for us, and I want you to feel happy and at ease. My folks won't mind, but are you okay if they join us occasionally? They worry about me forgetting them, so I spend weekends with them sometimes. Work keeps me quite occupied, and I come home exhausted. We used to have dinner together, but now I usually eat alone or outside. I get it, dear, and it's fine. Don't stress too much, I'm here. But how about your mom? Is she okay? I'll try to spend time with her when you're with your family. I'll visit my mom too. See, we're a team, aren't we? We can handle anything if we work together. Our wedding day wasn't fancy or big, but it was full of different feelings. Standing at the altar, looking into Kevin's eyes, I realized I had found my companion, my confidant, and my closest friend. He not only admires his mother secretly, but hides his real self. Sometimes I wondered which side of him was real, the one he shows me or the one he shows his mother. Our journey reached its end that evening, evolving from colleagues to friends and now as married partners. However, an unforeseen twist occurred. I didn't expect the change to be so extreme. It seemed like a tiny flaw in our otherwise perfect picture. I struggled with a strange mix of simplicity and dullness. Two people began their journey into marriage, brimming with dreams, aspirations, and expectations. However, as time flowed by, our days fell into a routine that can only be labeled as ordinary, even dull. From the instant we promised to stand by each other in good times and bad, our love was uncomplicated and our dedication was unwavering. At least, that was my intention. We didn't anticipate that within the splendor of our dreams, the actuality of a straightforward and commonplace married life would swiftly set in. As Kevin prepared to move out, I talked to my parents about his choice to live with us. How's everything going with Kevin? Mom asked. It's good, but sometimes I sense something's not quite right. Kevin is talented, sweet, and kind. We share interests, and he excels at work. But there's this odd side to him. Mom chimed in, I mentioned the other day that my daughter might have married someone with a strange vibe. He seems clever and alert, no doubt about that, but his eyes make me uncomfortable. Additionally, he displays immature and childlike behaviors that appear quite peculiar. Let's listen to what she has to say before making conclusions like that. Dad is somewhat correct. Kevin indeed exhibits three distinct personalities, actually four. His demeanor changes when he's working with me. He becomes more relaxed and cheerful. However, there's a noticeable shift in his behavior when he's with his mother. So, he's close to his mom. It's natural. Being the only child and with his mother being divorced, it's not too surprising. Have you had the chance to meet her? I've brought it up a few times, but he's always unsure. He says his mom isn't well and likes being alone. But that doesn't add up. Now you're his wife. It's just basic politeness for him to want you both to meet. I'm not saying it's a must, but it's a nice thing to do. Oh, and one more thing. Kevin wants to move in with us, bringing all his things from his place. I'm uneasy about it. I feel like he might use you. Why doesn't he want you to stay with him? I don't want you to go, but I need to understand his conditions. As we started our marriage journey, I observed Kevin often turning to his mom for guidance, looking for her nod of approval. It appeared that her viewpoint held more weight than mine, his wife. At first, I thought it was due to their tight bond. But as time passed, I discovered there was more to it. Samantha, Kevin's mother, had always been a powerful force, raising him as a single mom and fostering a deep sense of loyalty in him. He felt a duty to make her happy and placed her approval above ours. Over time, I noticed that I was taking a backseat to Samantha in Kevin's life. Our plans always seemed to align with her preferences, whether it was picking the color for our living room or choosing our vacation spots. I began to feel like an outsider in my own marriage, constantly overshadowed by her influence. 
When I tried to address the issue, both Kevin and Samantha resisted, viewing their close bond as a sign of love, while I saw it as an unhealthy obsession driving us apart. Kevin, are we still planning our honeymoon in Turkey? I need to book the tickets. Your mother is okay for now, right? Don't worry, she's stable. I took her to the doctor recently, and she's doing fine. It soon became clear that Samantha had strong negative feelings towards me. She didn't waste time trying to use her influence on her son to keep us apart. At first, I thought Samantha's actions were just typical mother-in-law behavior, and I hoped that things would get better over time. But as the months went by, her actions became more deliberate and painful. Samantha often called Kevin, subtly putting me down by making negative remarks about my personality and doubting my skills as a good wife. Her disapproval cast a dark cloud over our marriage, causing sadness as I saw how easily she influenced Kevin's thoughts and feelings. Samantha cleverly exploited his weaknesses, using guilt and manipulation to plant seeds of doubt in our relationship. In times of disagreements or challenges, Samantha consistently whispered harmful words to Kevin, planting seeds of uncertainty and discontent. Her actions fostered a negative atmosphere, making me feel alone and powerless. Despite my attempts to stay composed and strong for our marriage, Samantha's persistent efforts affected my emotional health. I frequently doubted my value, unsure if I could break free from her impact. Once, Samantha called Kevin's phone and I picked up as he was in the bathroom. Wanting to address the situation, I introduced myself as Kevin's wife. Samantha quickly accused me of separating her son from her, suggesting I influenced him to stay with me. I refuted the claims, stating that Kevin made his own decision to be with me. Despite my explanations, Samantha continued to blame me for his choices, alleging that I enchanted him with material things and appearance. Despite my objections, this untrue story continued, widening the gap created by Samantha's involvement. I spoke to him, explaining that things didn't go as we had agreed. I really care about your son, so please try to understand. I often check in on you. Samantha suddenly ended the call, showing her displeasure with a mocking sound. It became evident that our turkey trip was off. My job had other plans for me, instructing me to go on a short business-related trip to Mexico. One of our marketing agencies wanted to partner with their brand, and I had to go. I apologized to Kevin a lot, but surprisingly, he seemed okay with it. He just told me to enjoy myself and keep in touch. I felt really sad when the trip got canceled, but Kevin didn't seem bothered. I wondered if he was truly okay with it or if he was hiding his feelings. I told him I'd be back in a month. On the day I left, my parents were there, but Kevin was nowhere to be found. When I called him, he said he took his mom to the hospital for an emergency and felt sorry for missing my departure. I didn't ask too many questions. The trip to Mexico went well, and I video called Kevin, but he always seemed in a hurry. At first, I thought he was just busy. However, when I talked to my parents, I found out a different story. Kevin had been around but barely interacted with them. He had moved there permanently after I left, only giving quick greetings and spending minimal time with them. Inquisitive, I inquired about his whereabouts, wondering if he had gone to the office. My parents disclosed that indeed he had left but returned home during dinner, bringing along various items such as gaming equipment, a stereo, and a camera stand. Grateful for the information, I decided to have another conversation with him and expressed my concerns, thanking my mom. However, a few weeks before my planned return to Florida, the situation took a troubling turn. My mom called me in distress, sobbing uncontrollably. Confused, I asked her to clarify, and she shared that Kevin had unexpectedly brought his mother to our home. To their shock, he locked them out after a dinner outing. Worried about their safety, they had to find refuge in a motel for the night. I felt really mad and grossed out, like a time bomb about to burst, my heart racing so fast I thought it might pop. This guy had to understand a lesson. A few neighbors who liked my parents wanted to assist, but the police brushed it off as not important and said I had to be there to do something. I hurried back home, even though it took five days to get a ticket. When I got there at midnight, I discovered the guy didn't know I had an extra key. I phoned our neighbors, surprised that my parents hadn't asked for their assistance. We went to the house as a group, and I opened the door. To our surprise, we found Kevin inside, enjoying TV with his mother and laughing. Acting quickly, I seized him by the collar, giving him a stern reprimand and even pulling some of his hair. One of the neighbors comforted his mother, and the sense of satisfaction from confronting him was unmatched. He truly earned every consequence. In his weak attempt to clarify, he brought up his unwell mother and my parents' disapproval. I scolded him, labeling him as despicable for evicting my family and believing he could escape consequences. The authorities were notified and they detained them for further inquiry. 
Meanwhile, I got rid of all his possessions, incinerating his gaming console and posters. No compassion for such a despicable person. The police revealed that he had secretly brought his mother into the house and was providing her with everything she needed. In response, I initiated divorce proceedings, requesting a monthly payment as retribution for trespassing and taking control of my property. He got told to go back to Sarasota along with his mom because people didn't want him around anymore. Money wasn't important at that point. He had lied and was just a really bad person. I set up cameras and made security stronger to stop any more trouble. Ever since then, I've been careful about who I trust, making sure everything is clear before moving forward. I switched my job to work from home so I could watch everything until things got better. Presently, my family is doing well and everything is fine. We are content at the moment and I have gained a valuable insight.